Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome back to Civil Engineers YouTube channel. Unfortunately, the fresh civil engineers don't know the basic knowledge in civil engineering. I saw many civil engineering students, they are working on construction site to get experience, but they don't know the basics related in civil engineering. So therefore, you watch this video till the end to learn what are the basic knowledge for civil engineering students. This video can also help those people which want to construct their house and they are not technical so let's start guys if this video is helpful for you so must like this video guys the first one is the first uh, one is a dead load so what is a dead load as you know in steel structure design we need to find the dead load then we can find the uh, depth of foundation etc also uh, designing of beam slab column etc so therefore you should know what is a dead load uh, this is often asked question especially in interview so if someone asks from you what is a dead load so dead load means this is the self weight of structure what is self weight of structure self weight of structure means columns or uh, self weight beam uh, slab uh, anything okay so this is the self weight of structure okay or self weight of building the second one is guys very important also dpc so what is the abbreviation or DPC stand for damp proof course. This is the very important layer on the plinth level. That's why because if you don't provide the DPC damp proof course, so you will, uh, the building will make more seepage. Okay, so you will face more problems. So therefore, the DPC should be provided in any building construction. Now, what should be the thickness of DPC? The DPC thickness should not be less than one inch or 2.5 centimeter. This is very important. Okay, so it should not be less than 2.5 centimeter, but I recommend you about four centimeter is best. The third one is guys, if there is more than 5% moisture content in sand, as you know, sand is the part of concrete. As you know, concrete we are using in beam column slab in RCC structure, we are using concrete. So in concrete, the sand is a part. So therefore, if there is more than 5% moisture content, okay, so you will test to find the moisture content, okay. So if there is more than 5%, so that sand should not be used in concrete. Otherwise, it is also uh, make a seepage also, okay, and also efflorescence it can provide. Guys, the fourth one, the curing period time of RCC is 28 days. As you know, uh, curing uh, period is very important for RCC because in 28 days, concrete can get full strength. 99% strength can get a concrete after 28 days curing. Without the curing, concrete is not able to used. If you want to uh, construct a road from concrete, so the cars are not able, so you can't start the, uh, the vehicles on the road that's why because curing is important so therefore if you don't cure uh, the beam column and slab okay so there is hydration process so uh, therefore it will make cracks it cannot get the full strength so the curing period of rcc is 28 days this is also often asked question in interview guys the fifth one is the transfers reinforcement what are the transfer reinforcement okay provides and column is called lateral ties as you know guys we have this rcc column these are longitudinal bars so these rings are called transfer reinforcements these okay so this is called lateral tie okay same thing same ring when you provide in the beam so that is called so the transfer reinforcement provides in beam is called stirrups okay so in stirrups in beam it's called stirrups okay this is beam and this is column okay so now it means stirrups many students they can tell you about this this is ring okay so this is the uh, civil engineering terminology for the column it's called lateral tie and the beam uh, we call it stirrups okay so uh, here guys the stirrups and beam stirrups and beam and ties and column why we provide these as you can see the lateral tie is also provided in the column and a stirrups provided in the beam so what's the reason why we provide the stirrups and lateral ties 
NRCC structure. So the strips and beam and ties and column are provided to handle the shear force. To handle the shear force. Okay. To handle the shear force and keep the longitudinal bars in position. As you know, when we provide the four or six numbers of steel bars, uh, also same in column or in beam, so there it cannot handle or it cannot make a good position because who will bind this? Okay, so it will make a good position. Okay, so therefore the lateral tie and stirrups are used to keep the longitudinal bars in position. If you don't provide, so it cannot support the structure load. That's why because it can make shear uh, uh, shear force. Okay, so therefore uh, to uh, to handle the shear force and also to keep the main reinforcement or bars in position. Now, guys, the eighth one is that is about grade of concrete. As you know, M20 is a grade of concrete. M stands for mix. 20 is a characteristic strength of our number is characteristic strength of concrete after 28 days. So M20 means m20 okay so the ratio of m20 is 1 ratio 1 ratio 5 ratio 3 1 part is cement uh, 1.5 part is sand and 3 part is aggregate or crush okay this is aggregate so this is the m20 grade concrete remember guys this ratio, ratio should be used in beam column and slab that's why because these are the uh, main keys of building especially in RCC structure. So we should not use a less than M20 grade concrete, otherwise you will face the problem. So M20 grade concrete is used in the construction of beam, column and slab. Okay. Also in foundation, it's important. Okay. So therefore, I saw many people, they are just using M15 grade of concrete. This is not suitable to use. Okay. The ninth one is guys, hook slant should not be less than 90 or 3 inches. In many videos, I have discussed the front of you. That's why because in many building construction, especially on site, when I visit to any construction site, so there, they provide the, uh, the rings or the lateral tie just same like this, as you can see, guys. Uh, this is the lateral tie. So they just, these hooks, they just uh, the bend hooks with 90 degree. So it should not be in 90 degree, guys. Okay, this is wrong. Okay, but the hooks should be bent with 135 degree with the spacing of minimum 3 inches. Minimum 3 inches. This is very important. Or 90. What is 9? So uh, 9 is a constant number and D is a die of steel bar which you are using for the lateral tie or for the stirrup maybe 8 mm or 6 mm but it should not be less than 6 mm. So I recommend you for a 12 millimeter die of steel bar you should use the 8 millimeter lateral tie die. Okay. Guys the last one is the slope or pitch of the stairs should be N25 to 40 degree or angle. As you know guys how? You can see this is the staircase section. Okay, as you can see, this is the tread and riser. Okay, so guys, this angle, this one, the angle with waist and also ground level. So it should be between in stairs, it should be between 25 degree to 40 degree. Okay, otherwise, so if you increase more than 40 degrees, so they, they, that are not suitable for use in building. That's why because we have patient there. Also, uh, we have uh, uh, more uh, babies are there. Okay, so also many people are in home. So therefore, they are not using to use this staircase if the angle of pitch are uh, angle of pitch or the slope is more than 40 degree. So between 25 to 40 degree. But I recommend you between okay. So 25 to 35 is best. If you increase this, so and it is not able to use in house, especially in hospital. You should try to not uh, go more than 30 degree. So guys, this is some uh, basic information is related in a building construction if you are working on site or if you are non-technical so you should learn about this thing and you should also implement in your house construction that will be good for you thanks for watching see you in next video goodbye